Welcome to Ageless by Rescue. This podcast is devoted to exploring the science of rejuvenation, uncovering the most trusted experts, the must-have products, innovations, and technology in the field of vitality, aesthetics, new beauty, and cosmetic enhancement. Chris, I'm so delighted to have you on the show. We have known each other for what, 15? A long time. (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, as I said in my intro, Chris is the definitive leader and um, innovator in the wellness space. And she's written so many books. She is a, a go to expert. But more recently, you started working with spas and retreats on developing their wellness and longevity programs. And one of the properties that you introduced me to, so you know, you've been writing for um, Ageless Magazine as our expert contributor on wellness travel and biohacking travel. But one of the properties you introduced me to, and I am so grateful for, is Amatara Well Leisure Retreat in Phuket, Thailand. And wow, what an innovation. Yeah, oh, well, thank you. Thank you for having me. And it's great for being mates for 15 years and, you know, working and supporting each other um, to be on your podcast is an absolute honour. So um, thank you. Um, but, yes, I will tell you about Emitara. It's um, it, it was one of those projects that was quite, for me, um, it just spoke to all my passion points because wellness is very much, uh, I mean, it's been something I've studied and worked in since I was 15, um, but a lot of people don't quite understand what is wellness and they think it's some sort of, um, you know, arduous, disciplined, you know, up at six, green juice, yoga, journaling, mindful, which it is, but it's also. Or it can be, rather it can, it can Absolutely it can be. Um, but for the majority of people who want wellness, they also want balance and lifestyle so and, and pleasure. And hence where the well-leisure concept came in. It's wellness with pleasure or wellness with leisure. And it's just combining, you know, the whole concept of how wellness is a lifestyle. It's not just, you know, a, a restrictive moment in time. It, and it's, it's it's almost a, a conscious decision to step into it, as you said, as a lifestyle choice. Um, one of the things that was just a mind blowing experience for me, and for those of you who've been playing along, you would have noticed that in uh, late June uh, this year, I took my now thirteen year old daughter to Amatara as a mother-daughter experience to really immerse ourselves into the world of well leisure. And the precipice for uh, this trip for us was that every year I go to a wellness retreat and uh, Chris and I discuss this at length, which ones are our favourites, where are we devoted to and how how much we go into the flow of them, right? We, we always talk about which ones are really hardcore and which one yeah. to be pure. And so I certainly don't have as much experience as you, Chris, but I, I like to think that, you know, I know a thing, I know my way around a, a wellness retreat. But for me, what was really interesting is that Lily has always said, Mommy, you always come back different. So she could notice it. Even, even as a five year old, she noticed it. As a six year old, and then as a teenager, she noticed it. She said, You come back different. You're in a happier mood. You're a better mummy. Um, and you just seem to look different as well. And she wanted to know what it was. And so I would try to bring a little bit of the retreat back with me. But, you know, you fall into a routine that is, you know, a default routine. But when I took Lily with me to Amatara retreat and both of us got to experience and, and get involved in this immersion and this learning journey, when we came back, we brought so much Amatara back into our lives Mm. and we still do it we still do it we still practice and what are we now nearly September yeah a few months since and she's only a you know a young teen and I'm a busy woman working mothering all of that solo 
it's a lot to keep those wonderful rituals into your life, but we we literally have brought it back with us because it was a family affair. Yeah. Look, Baha, you've touched on two really valuable things. There is one, she, the fact that Lily noticed the change in you for having had a wellness retreat and, and you know, that time out and good food and, you, you know, all the beautiful things that come with a wellness retreat. But a lot of those are not kid-friendly um, or, or, you know, you have to be over 18 to be um, allowed to go. But also to the, the point that you go and you have this, extreme shift in your habits when you go and all the food that is prepared is extremely wholesome and nourishing and so we had to cook it too so we had that food she had a project Mm -hmm. for um tech and it was to prepare a nutritious meal and to videotape it and to provide all the nutritional information about it and she went straight to an avatar recipe that we learned to cook as part of our well leisure program. She right. cooked her first three course meal at Amatara, and she was able to confidently reproduce that as a project for school. And she felt so excited and and you know as an expression of what she learned. It was great. Oh, uh, look, and that's it. So a lot of these wellness retreats. Uh, that you go to because they are so a little bit out of your normal lifestyle the habits you pick up once you get home very hard to to you know implement into your lifestyle so that was a big goal with Emma Tara is that with this well leisure concept we wanted it to be something that people can blend into their lifestyle so even if they only took home one or two positive changes that brought joy or happy you know some sort of um, positive step to their well-being that was a good thing. And the other thing is why can't children, like exactly what you said with Lily, you know, children need to start learning about their health from a long, young age because let's face it, they're not learning it at school um, or very superficial. So these life skills that they can learn while they're on holidays in a fun, you know, relaxed environment, they stay with them for life. And, you know, Lily is learning to cook these healthier way. You know, that's a skill she'll have for life now. And it wasn't arduous. It was something that you learnt, you had fun doing it, and then you take it home. And so and it becomes a lifestyle. The other thing that I always say, and um, I think we've talked about this before, is um, kids and and most people really, they follow what, you do not what you say and so for me wellness and um all of that is 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 something that I do so she's witness to me traveling around the world and going to wellness destinations she's witness to me you know exercising preparing food in a certain way eating a certain way so you know there's a congruency in, in what I ask her to do and what I do but there was nothing like being side to side and doing it and I was I have to say, I I wasn't sure how she would be received. And one of the things that was so extraordinary about Amatara, and I had so many messages on my social media while we were there and after we were there saying, did they let your daughter do everything? And I went, yes, they welcomed Mm -hmm. Lily as her own individual well-leisure guest. She received in the same way that I did, a full uh, consultation upon arrival, a full medical check. Um, She set her own goals with the wellness uh, director. Um, I set my own goals. Some were in tandem. Some were quite different, obviously. We're in different stages of our lives. Um, And then they were so kind to accommodate that we wanted to do everything together. So the spa portion of the um, program, which was magnificent and mind-blowing I have to say we'll get to that later they were able to adjust it for us to have all of our treatments together because they were it was the first time she was having a spa retreat um yeah the one-on-one personal training we were able to have together the a lot of the mindfulness activities uh we were able to share it was really extraordinarily well devised and executed like something I will never forget. And I was so grateful for the way they took the pressure of hosting Lily off me. Yeah. 
but she was still with me. Yeah, and look, part of the planning of putting that program together was to make sure it was accessible for all, um, make sure it was family friendly, um, because a lot of, you know, as we said before, wellness retreats, you can't bring your children. And so that means you've got to book a holiday or take that time out. And when you've only got four weeks in your leave a year and you're taking one of those weeks to do a wellness retreat, that really only leaves you three weeks to holiday with your family. And a lot of people, in you know, time is so precious and it's moving so quickly to be able to do a holiday so that you could, even if Lily didn't want to do the wellness component, but I'm so glad she did and loved it, you could still do your wellness component and Lily could just do, you know, play in the pool or do, because as you say, the staff are absolutely fantastic there and they they would ensure that she still had, an, you know, an amazing time. Um, but we wanted to make sure the concept allowed families to holiday together. So if one or two or everyone wanted to do a wellness program, they could. Or if just you wanted to do the wellness program and someone else, or, you know, you're going with a friend, they they didn't. They wanted to have the cocktails at 5 o'clock. They wanted to, you know, do whatever. They could as well. But you'd still get the experience together as well as your own personal outcomes that you wanted. Speaking of cocktails, what was so <laughs> sweet is that at the pool bar, there's an amazing infinity pool in the middle of the uh, resort. First of all, the resort, the um, architecture of the resort is so magnificent and has just a beautiful, uh, respectful nod to the Thai heritage, which I really enjoyed, um, but still very much a luxurious, um, expanded sense of space. So our pool villa was enormous and extremely comfortable so you know we were together for seven days seven nights and we never really bumped into each other even though it was one bedroom uh, th there were so many other spaces for us in our villa that we just really had a lot of space and it, and there were times where you'd have some kind of a session and you needed to process yeah yeah journal or reflect or meditate we just never got in each other's kind of under each other's feet, which is really lovely. But what was uh, really special and unique, I was telling you about the cocktails, going back to that, is at the they had a beautiful bar where they have make cocktails, but they knew we were on the Well Leisure program. And so every day they would offer us a beautiful mocktail. And so, and in the mornings, they knew that we liked watermelon juice. So our watermelon juice would be ready for us at our breakfast table. Our mocktails would be ready for us at the cabana. That gorgeous attention to detail, luxury service mentality was there. Yeah. And so we didn't feel like, oh, I didn't feel like I was missing out because I was on holidays with Lily at a wellness retreat. We had all the fun flourishes. Yes. Yeah. Still within the support of it being a well leisure moment for us. Oh, that, I mean, that's fantastic. And again, they're all the little touch points that we, when we devised this was to make sure that the guests that were there on a wellness program, you know, you could have been tempted to go and have the, you know, the ch hot chocolate or whatever, at, but they're so good at making sure that you're, you know, you have what you need. Yes. Um, and so any of that sort of distraction or um, that feeling you're missing out, it, there was none of that. In fact, it was probably quite the opposite in that you felt, wow, how good is this? You know, I, all, all that I need for my, you know, program is right here. I don't have to go seeking anywhere or there's no temptation. And, and you know, that is the real world as well. So if you are trying to be healthier but you're out for drinks with friends and you're choosing the healthier option, you know, it becomes a choice. Um, you know, and that's just, it, everything that we put together in that program was to help you with the tools subliminally um, to then when you get home, you've got those tools, you know. It's so interesting. You in your willpower. Willpower. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's actually true because it was a very much a frictionless experience. There was no kind of conscious, I am now going to have a mocktail or I am now going to go and train with my trainer. It, it all flowed very, very naturally. And to your point of making it easy to take the healthier option, um, one of the, the things that I noticed is that when we would go for our personal 
training sessions. So we would go to the gym. Um, the instructor was there ahead of us. It was beautifully laid out. There were lovely little towels and um, and our water bottles were there. And um, he or she, depending on what session we were having, they were they were ready to kind of meet any resistance or um or maybe fear or trepidation we had for trying a new class. And you know, they checked in with each of us as to whether or not we wanted to have a hard session or an introductory session. And even that broke the ice and made us more open to trying something new because we weren't scared that we were going to be pushed beyond what was comfortable or what we were ready for. And just that testing of the temperature with us was a very gracious and very Thai way. Yes. Making sure that we were doing something that was going to be a stretch, but it wasn't going to feel horrible. Yeah, yeah. So, and that was another big thing that we said, you know, particularly when you are coming, say, mother, daughter or husband, wife, or whatever, you know, people are coming in at different levels and you have to meet them at their level and then get them out of their comfort zone. But if you're taking them way out of their comfort zone, yes. way before they're ready, guess what? You have an awful time. You're not coming back tomorrow. That's it. I'm done with exercise. So, or, or whatever it is that you might be doing, whether it's... Yes, coaching. that's exactly it. And I think that's what scares a lot of people about wellness retreats because I think people are anticipating boot camp and yeah. a sudden and sharp departure of the things that maybe they're addicted to, maybe they're comfortable with, maybe they're not ready to let go of yet. And yeah. I've been at those types of retreats and the first three days are horrible. You're literally weaning off yeah you've got headaches yeah you're irritable you're not sleeping well yes and I think that that can be off-putting for a novice to experiencing wellness and so for me the Amatara approach of well leisure it certainly suited me even though I'm a veteran uh, wellness retreat goer but it was very warm and welcoming for Lily who was absolutely petrified that she was suddenly going to go into a boot camp that was a little bit joyless, a little bit tough, not so much of a holiday, but it was the exact opposite. It became like a seamless immersion into, a, it was almost like an invitation to a whole new world. Yeah, which is great. And, you you know, again, you've touched on it as well in that sometimes people get a little bit anxious when they are going to a pure destination wellness retreat because it's like, oh, my gosh, I have to give up coffee and what if I can't cope and you know what if uh, you know there's all there's a real anxiety around going to wellness retreat and um actually I just wrote an article about that and you know as much as you can prepare for it you know by giving up some of the bad habits or, or weaning off um it's still quite daunting for a lot of people so again with the well leisure concept it's like you know, meeting people where they are when they arrive and that the wellness, um, you know, consultation that you have at the start is very much to also ascertain where you are in your journey and what you'd like to achieve. And there's no um, right or wrong answer or it's just really where you are now. Um, And, you know, I love that they, they put Lily all the way through it and for her at that age to understand a lot more about her body and how it responds to food, to exercise, to relaxing, time out, um, it was wonderful. I think that's wonderful. And it, you know, was, that- it was extraordinary. And the other thing that I liked about the consultation process, since you brought it up, about meeting you where you were at, um, so they gave us each the privacy to express ourselves and so that each of our journeys could be curated mindfully and also in response to where we were at Um, but what I really liked is I had said to the um, the doctor who was doing our assessment that um, neither Lily or I like being weighed like it's something that we're really conscious of removing from dialogue in our household like the number on the scale doesn't matter and there was definitely a bit of anxiety for Lily that we were going to go into this wellness program that has, I guess, a detox component to it um, because you're changing the way you eat and how much fluid you take and the exercise you do. And she said, mum, they're going to weigh us. They're going to weigh us. And I said, 
pretty sure they're not because I did note that in our uh, the yeah. very comprehensive pre, survey yeah. pre um, you know goal setting and survey and they handled that so beautifully and and it and they actually validated that very beautifully as well and so it wasn't our focus our focus was just to feel good to yeah. eat better to sleep better to play better you yeah. know one of the things that I wanted to do in this experience is be playful and present for yeah. our time together and yeah. they really built it into our program so that was awesome yeah I look I, I'm so happy to hear that and I'm also because I'd buy into that um, you know, I guess theory as well, that your weight is a number and it fluctuates all the time and who cares? It's about the health of your body and how you feel. And, again, that's one of the world leisure concepts is, you know, how it's all about the feels and the, and I hate that word feels, but <laughs> it's the feeling and if you feel healthy and relaxed and, and vital in your body, that's way more powerful than a number on a, you know, on scales and and I'm really I'm so thrilled that they did honor that too very much so and yeah, yeah it was really it was very uh thing. and the other thing that uh, I noticed that they handled absolutely exquisitely is don't forget I'm a 49 year old woman who's what had at least a thousand spa treatments over my lifetime a minimum you know yeah, and yeah. I've been naked and I've been scrubbed and I've been yeah. vichied and I've been you know, everything you can think of. This was her first experience. Like being naked is is not normal to her. Being yeah. touched or having massages is not normal to her. Or It was all new. Every single sensory experience was new and very much normal for me and very, very new for her. And again, in that very tight, very respectful, very gentle manner, they were able to really tiptoe around her boundaries and and check in with her throughout every, you know, we were there a week. We had so many treatments on top of, you know, activities. They really were just exquisite. And even the personal trainers, they wouldn't touch her. Like they mm -hmm. wouldn't adjust her by touching her. They were so respectful that she yeah. was a young woman and, and, doesn't need to be and shouldn't be and doesn't want to be touched. So when they gave instruction or adjustments, they would either just show her or show me and yeah. then she would follow. And it was all those subtle touch points that made me realise they have done this before, they have mapped all of this out. And similarly, we ran into some other families that were doing well leisure and there was an older couple in their, I would say, late 60s, um, and there was, a, I think, a family of four, um, and that we, you know, we would chat, and they had the same kind of experience too. Oh, that's so good because, and, and again, it's that consistency that you want. Um, so if you were to come back next time, they would meet you where you are now and then, you know, bring it on. But the fact that everyone got a consistent experience for them is is wonderful. Uh, one of the other things that we really tried to integrate was, you know, for yourself, you're a solo parent, solo, uh, well, single parent, taking your child on a, on a holiday. And so that was also, a, 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 I guess, a travel sector that we wanted to make sure we catered to so that um, because you do, it's a lot, you know, for a single parent to juggle it all um, and to then look after themselves and think about a holiday um, you, you know, there's a lot of moving parts in that, and but it's a really under-serviced um, part of our society. So we that was a real conscious effort. And let's look at these single parents who do it all, and how can we create something meaningful for them, and you know, give them some that a recharge they need, but also allow them to holiday with their child, children or whatever. So even if they're younger, I'm not sure if you saw. There's a really beautiful kids club, and there's um you know wonderful activities it's not your standard kids club like there are a lot of cultural um cooking you know some really beautiful experiences for children in kids clubs but it was just so then 
if you needed to go off and have a treatment or some training sessions or whatever, you could and know that your child would be having a great time and you didn't have to worry. Um, so there was that element that we've really thought long and hard about is how can we really provide something great for these people that, you know, would find it tough to do a wellness type break. You're absolutely right because I think about all the times I've travelled with Lily before, I would not have one second to myself because Lily never has had babysitting or kids clubs or anything. So I would only, I could only do things where I, you know, even if we went to Hawaii, for example, and we were at, I would be with her. Yeah. Sitting sit right by the pool as she's going on the water slides, or we'd be doing the water slides together. There really wasn't that break for me. So the holidays were never as relaxing. Yeah, yeah. And on this time, even even though she was with me, as I said to you before, they took the burden of me hosting and showing Lily the ropes. They took that off me. Yeah. And yeah. I really appreciated that because I actually sunk into my regeneration mood where I got to really sink deep into uh, wellness and leisure. Um, yeah. And that was, and I, again, it was just something that I noticed Exactly as you said, it was subliminal. It wasn't overt, but it was certainly a lightness of being that I could um, feel. Should we talk about the food? My yeah, God. but I just I had a question for Lily. So, did she have any treat? Like, did she have a massage? And how did she? Had, she had every single yeah. treatment I did. She had a two and a half hour hammam experience. Oh, that that's yeah. How amazing. Was- was yeah. absolutely the best spa treatment I've ever had in my life of any country, of any destination. And she got to have it with me at the same time. That's her yeah. first spa experience. So I think she's ruined for life. There's nothing we'll ever top that. Oh, and I mean, that is a good one to start with. And it's pretty hardcore though, because they do, they scrub you and, you know. It's All hot, of it. Hot, it's, yeah. And it's got yeah. hours. Yeah, yeah. I oh, mean, fantastic. it was, that, so that was her very first spa treatment. But, you know, uh the head massages, the compress massages, um, everything, absolutely yeah. everything was exquisite. But um, should we talk about the food? Yeah. And you touched on it before with your breakfast when they came, you had your watermelon juice. So on the menu, and I don't know if it's still on the menu, but there's um, now Chris's breakfast because when I was there, we designed this really, like it was a breakfast that my from my health consult was this is what I should have to start my day. And and it was so beautiful that every day I'd just have it. And so in the end, they'd just say, you're having Chris's breakfast. And oh. then and then the whole Lemitara team, by the time I left, they were all saying, yeah, we're having Chris's breakfast. And the chef did say he was putting it up on the menu. Um, but look, they, they, the good thing is that, you know, they are part of this well leisure journey is moving away from the deep fried. And Thai food can be quite sweet and... Um, Palm sugary. Yeah, palm sugary, and so we're getting them to move away from that. Um, look, you still have some components of that because there are people that, you know, just want the holiday, um, but they're really making a huge effort to um, make the food as healthy and vital as they can. But it's also like you're missing delicious out. and plentiful. We, oh, my God, we ate so well. We ate lobster. We ate prawns. We ate sashimi. Um, gorgeous tuna tatakis we learned how to make you know gorgeous healthy versions of Thai classics that we we enjoy so much now um but one of the things speaking of breakfast which I I think this is a really cute story um so there's definitely no deprivation at Amatara let's let's just put it out there it's it is an exquisite um sensorial experience on every level so not only is everything beautiful you're in a really great part of Phuket gorgeous um you know beach area private area uh stunning views but the food is wonderful so on our first morning when we woke up we went to breakfast and you know here I am saying we're at a well leisure that we're going to be healthy and stuff and there is this buffet of heavenly delights, like literally everything you've ever dreamt of eating. Everything you've ever dreamt of eating is here. Yeah. And I could see Lily's eyes just go, like, how am I going to navigate this? 
And I said to her, I said, you know what we should do? I think today should be a discovery day. I think let's put whatever we want on our plate and taste it all. This after we had our wellness consult. <laughs> yeah, it was before our wellness consult. And I said, but let, like, this is amazing. Like every bone in your body wants to play with this. Like, yeah. And I thought, why shouldn't we? Like we can. We, we're here to experience all of it. So so we did. And then we we spoke to our wellness consultant and said, look, you know, we experienced this today. It was wonderful but overwhelming. What do you suggest we do? And she gave us some amazing workarounds. So she said, yeah, like from this part of the buffet, you should take this and this. From this part of the buffet, you should try this and this. When you get to the omelette station, try an egg white omelette and add some clean protein to it or try a soup with some clean protein in it. Anyway, so what happened is that from that day forward, we were able to interact confidently with the buffet, but we both learned something so that when we're out of Amatara and we're in the real world, we got given tools of discernment that we could apply. And yeah. that to me was the gift of Amatara for, for both of us is that, okay, everything is always around you. In real life, yeah. there's temptation every, but learning how to discern a, a workaround that's something you have for life and it was brilliant and we both left you know not being too crazy with the buffets and also feeling like well like you didn't miss out because you we still didn't miss out enjoy and you probably enjoyed it more because you knew how um wonderful it was for you know for your body and you know and you never feel great after a stack of pancakes so you know no no yeah. but it was it was just really it was really good because it to me, it I could again see the hallmarks of a really well curated program. That yes, it's on offer, but how about we teach you how to navigate in the real world rather than eliminate everything, create an artificial environment that you will never be able to recreate unless you have a personal chef, unless you have someone yes. buying all your groceries for you, which isn't realistic for most people. So for me, that was a way better lesson learned. Yeah, and that's all really intentional. And look, for those who are on a bit more of a strict program, there is the other restaurant where you can go and you order off the menu. And Which we would do for lunch. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's that. And then if you are there on a group retreat, you go down to the retreat centre as well and then that's all catered. But that's if you're, say, a small group and you're there doing a yoga retreat or something um, or detox, you can have that. So it does offer that. But, you know, we really want the, you know, the mass market to, to you know, to access wellness without feeling like they need to go to a wellness retreat. Um, but exactly as you said, you know, also integrate a few little things into your lifestyle so that when you go back home, you've got your little tools, you know how to behave <laughs> and control yourself in, yes. a, in a big breakfast buffet. Yes. Um, and, and just or in a food court or in a food court, yeah. else. Or at the canteen or when you get an extensive menu. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, but one of the things that I, I love there, they do some really yummy raw desserts and that, that was a challenge getting those integrated in. because We had the raw desserts and they were amazing. I don't even like dessert. I love yeah, their desserts. Yeah, yeah. So some of their raw desserts where they have really, um, you know, played around, the, you know, the local ingredients and this one, it's like this cheesecake, but it's a raw cheesecake um, and another one, this chocolate um oh it's amazing but it's you know you're eating it and it feels a little bit decadent but you go wow this is all you know really wholesome nutrition. and nutrient dense food as yeah. well yeah yeah can I ask you um can you share with us some of uh you know the more hotel aspects of of the property where is it my geography is horrible um how many rooms are in this property because do you know, I, I still can't believe it. I, I don't believe it. Um, when we were there, it was full. Yeah. We never yeah. felt it was. Yeah. Look, it is on a massive expanse of land. So, look, you fly into Phuket. That's the closest airport. Which is and, awesome because there are yeah. direct flights from Australia to Phuket. And I really appreciate it not having to change flights or yeah. deal with time zones and um, stops. That was awesome 
Yeah, and so, yeah, fly direct into Phuket. They will arrange to pick you up at the airport and take you straight down. It's on the southern tip. So if anyone's watched, um, I think it's at the beach with Leo DiCaprio, yes. that's filmed at the hotel. So when you're sitting probably in your pool villa and you could look across out to your right and you saw another resort right on the point, that was where they shot the beach and that's where they they stay. Uh, but it literally it wraps around that whole um, sort of cove of the southern end of Phuket. I'm, I'm going to say Cape Panoa, but that don't quote me on the correct pronunciation. But it is a massive, you know, area. And because it is, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, trees and beautiful gardens, you don't feel like you are on top of each other. I just never, like, we had that enormous, enormous uh, infinity pool to ourselves on many occasions. Yeah, yeah. On many occasions. It was, and when I say enormous, it is just a sight to behold. It is just the most gorgeous pool, absolutely beautiful. And the cabana we had to have, the air-conditioned cabana on a few days, it was super hot. So we took our lunch by the pool, but in the cabana. Yeah. Amazing. No one around us. We went to the beach a couple of times, private beach. We met yeah. one or two people there. It was just really, it felt so luxurious to have all that space. I And I think too, because there's so much to do around the resort as well. So you can go to the beach club and you can go out sailing or stand up paddle boarding. So, um, and they have other activities you can do. Then they have this massive spa. So they could have, you know, 30-odd people at the spa at any one time. Um, they've got this beautiful new Pilates yoga studio, which wasn't open when you were there, but it's now opened. Um, you can do aerial yoga, reformer Pilates. You know, well, I did yoga and boxing and Pilates at the spa pavilion, which, yeah, are, again, mind blown. It's this open air pavilion right at the top of the resort, overlooking the bay, and it. it I have never seen a more inspirational place to do exercise. Like it, it really blew our minds. And sometimes we would do it at sunrise. Sometimes we would do it at sunset. It was so beautiful. Yeah, it is. And so there's lots of little nooks, I guess, like that. That you know, at any one time. And then they've got this beautiful library where people can just go and sit and relax so and you know particularly if you're working traveling and working you can go to the library and um you know that might have a few people in it but there's just so many um you know spots to go don't quote me on this but I think there's about 121 yes that's what I remember yeah yeah so and that varies from whether it's pool villa the suites are incredible as well and, and, you know, it's so well designed too that even if you are spending time in your hotel, in your suite or your villa, you've got space. It's not these tiny little pokey, you know, hotel rooms that you might just get your bed and your bathroom in a little living area. They've all okay. got very separate spaces. So even if you are sharing a room, a smaller suite with someone, you've still got your own space because it's so well designed um yeah to to sort of work in with the environment as well and in terms of um cost I would I thought that Amatara was very reasonable compared to other wellness retreats that I've attended um and it is something that you think you know what it it would make for a great alternative family holiday particularly if you're traveling through to Europe or if you're having an Asian holiday maybe at the beginning or the end of your trip, you'd have, you know, your well-leisure stay five nights or seven nights. It, it made sense. It it was, it seemed to, to me to be great value and also a great add-on to a Euro trip or um, a, another Asian trip. Yeah, look, I, totally. And I mean, I, I would definitely, if I'm flying to Europe or something, I, I do like Thailand as a destination, not just a stopover, but a destination yeah. where you can go. Um, an add-on. I always think yeah, of it as an add-on. An add-on, yeah. It, look, it is very easy. It is affordable. And that was the other thing. So, look, while a wellness retreat as such, you pay a premium because it is so one-to-one -one, um, tailor-made, but this is sort of that still hitting that leisure market price point so that you've got your leisure market price point but then you have all the wellness services to 
you know, to make it seem really affordable. So generally in the packages there are, and particularly if you do a wellness package, you get your wellness consult, you get this, you know, all the services that are recommended as a result of that wellness concept um, consult included in your package. So, and then the variation just comes into what level of accommodation you want, whether a suite or a pool villa or a two bedroom suite. And I do want to point out another thing. If the prospect of seeing other people's children on your wellness experience horrifies you, I can assure you that you don't see other people's children because there are so many villas. Most people who are families are in their villa and they extensively use their villa and their pool and the services of their own villa. So we just didn't see children, other children. And there were families there, many, many, many families there. So the only time we saw them was maybe a little bit by the main pool yeah. um, that they would come and have like a little family swim. But again, most people had pool villas, so they would retreat back to their pool villas if they had a family. And secondly, as you said, the spa, even though it feels very intimate from a service perspective, you don't see anyone. Mm -hmm. So your spa journey and all of your treatments are very much your spa journey and your spa experience. So we never saw anyone else turning up. Maybe we saw a few people checking in at the spa reception, but there was no overlap. There was no, um, yeah, they, they, you really don't experience other people's kids, which I think can be off-putting for some people. They think, oh, well, I kind of want to try well leisure, but I don't want to deal with other people's families. So I just want to share that as a, as something yeah. that I noticed and I was aware of because sometimes I think, oh, I just want an adults only retreat. But this this had all the feeling of an adults only retreat. Yeah. And I think because Phuket's such a, a family orientated destination in its own right. So even and that's the other good thing about Emitara is that even though you might be there as a wellness guest in the well leisure program, you can come and go as you please, like any other resort. So, and they do encourage you to surround yourself with the local environment, get out and explore. So Indeed. that's all part of, you know, wellness, right? Creating these experiences. So, yeah. and, and because Phuket is, is such a great destination for families with so much to do, I think two people will, they'll, you know, take the time to go out and explore as well as, you know, spend time in their own private villa. Uh, but I agree, you know, there's nothing worse when you go on holidays if you just want to relax by the pool and read a book and you've got kids, you know, splashing, you know, great, that's, you know, that's what holidays are for. But I I was there for two weeks and never once did I feel like, oh, my gosh, yeah, I never did either. <laughs> you yeah. know, as a parent with three children, um, you know, you, you do after a while go, oh, gosh, it's nice when it's quiet. Yeah. So. Yeah, but I, I do. Yeah, I just think the destination. There were so many things that ticked the box um, when we, you know, we were putting together the program to encourage families and single parents and friends to come and do. Oh, I would love to go there with girlfriends. That to oh, me yeah. would also be a magnificent destination for a ladies' trip. You yeah. know, that would it. It really has everything. So it has it has the luxury. It's it's four stars, right? Is it four or four and a half? Yeah, it's about four and a half. I think once they've got a few more renovations going on and a few, you know, um, upgrades that they are doing. Um, but I, the prop, I was the property built by the Four Seasons. Is that correct? Someone told me no, that. No, it's a privately owned property, um, and the family engaged a very well known Thai architect to design it. Um, so it is privately owned, and the family. They did outsource management to different, um, like the Four Seasons. Is that that's what I recall it being. Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. I, I had friends message me and say, oh, I've been there as the Four Seasons. Yeah. Was it Four Seasons or Sheridan? Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's now family, back into the family name and they, they run it. Um, and, and it they, felt like it didn't feel like a chain, like even yeah, the good yeah. chain. Personal felt, touches. Yeah, yeah, there were lots of personal touches. And, yeah. you know, it, everything was okay. Everything was a yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And yeah. it was glorious. Like, yeah. And funnily enough, we went at the tail end of monsoon season and it was fine. Yeah. But we did yeah. not, it didn't feel like 
overwhelming. Like, yeah, we had some tropical showers, but uh, oh no, we did have we we did have like a um, blistery blustery night one night, but it was quite. That's right. I remember really. you saying that, and you were going to go on a tour, but because of the weather. Yes. That's okay. right. But but the rest of it, it just, it was fine. And it worked in with school holidays beautifully. And they, you know, again, they were so accommodating of everything. Yeah. Um, but I'm so pleased to have had you on the show because I love talking about wellness retreats. And I, I've talked about it before, but it's so nice to have you having been part of the architecture of the program to kind of share the inside scoop as to what the retreat was trying to deliver um, uh, that was even more um, wonderful insight. No, oh, thank you. And look, the the end goal is to go. Life is to be lived, right? And I know the word joy gets thrown around a lot now, but you know there should be joyful moments in your life, and holidays being one of them. But being healthy and and finding wellness should be, you know, joyful. And that's that was the whole premise of the concept is to let's make being well and wellness retreats fun and you know bringing that element that's not so you know rigid rigid you know yeah. just fun it's lifestyle it's about balance so if you're 100 percent healthy 80 percent of the time fantastic and if you want that champagne at the end of the day because you're on holidays and that's fine because that's what life is about and it's then taking that holiday so it then becomes lifestyle so, you know, a couple of, and I said it before, these habits that you pick up while you're relaxed and have the time to think about it become embedded so that when you go home, then that just becomes your new habit. And I would 1,000% return to Amatara. Like, and I would genuinely, I was gifted um, part of the trip, but I have to say it was a singular joy. It was such a revelation and again as someone as a stalwart of well travel wellness travel well leisure really spoke to me and it, it was a new way of experiencing it and I would genuinely uh recommend it and I think the photos and the videos from our trip like really spoke to as you said the joy that we were experiencing yeah, yeah. oh that's so good to hear and you know it's wonderful because that was the the underlying message we wanted with the concept is to make it you know enjoyable and joyous and um still feel like you're at a wellness retreat but with that fun element and the ability to oh, you know what tonight I'm just going to have a, a dessert or a breakfast buffet tonight I'm just going to have a pastry or because that's what life's about, right? These moments that, you know, you can't be good 100% of the time. But And also there is no good or bad, you know. Right. Um, that's, no. that's what I yeah. like. There is no good or bad. It's it's just, you know, too much of this is not going to get you the end result that you want. And I think when you step out of that, exactly like you said, when you step out and you just think about things, you it gives you a, an opportunity to reset and that's, that was that was wonderful. That mid year reset. You know, we all start off the front end of yeah. this gun ho, yeah. but that mid year reset just really kicks. And I also like just FYI, I, I always recommend to people if you can do a November retreat. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Such a good way to like get yeah. to that finish line without being burnt out. And I think part of wellness is not waiting till you're burnt out to take the holiday to take the wellness escape the retreat is to catch it before you go into burnout so I always say an October November break can make all the difference to how you start your year because it just takes the pressure valve off and you re-energize you finish strong and then you yeah, start strong I agree I mean the thing is both you and I are in the business of you know, encouraging people to be proactive with their their health and their longevity. And, you know, if it's going to an Emitara, you know, and that that's something that's affordable and doable and something for everyone versus doing nothing because not everyone wants to go to a wellness retreat, do the Emitara, <laughs> you know, and, and I agree 100%, you know, don't wait for the end of, oh, I'll just get through the end of the year and then I'll think about next year. It's like, exactly what you said you know take that time out before the silly season gets really mad because you need that little top up to you you know um, I think so 
yeah, just your whole vitality. Should we go back? Should we go back together? Yeah, yeah. When are we going? Um, November? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, pick me, pick me. Yeah, yeah. But no, I, I'm so glad you and Lily had an incredible time and that you. Yes. you so and, grab and, your. And go back. Grab your children by the hand, grab your husband by the hand, grab your friends by the hand and and experience well leisure, especially if you are new to wellness retreats. It's a beautiful entry point. Yes. And if you're a seasoned wellness um, traveler, it's a, it's a beautiful new way of discovering um, what a lifestyle change could look like. So I want to thank you so much, Chris, for being on the show and for oh, letting pleasure. me re- reminisce about my beautiful Amatara well leisure experience. Oh, absolute pleasure and, and glad that, um, yeah, the feelings are still here and, you know, front and centre. Thank you.